Hi, I'm Siu Ling Hui with part six of a video series about how your financials can help you manage and drive business success. In this video, you'll see why strong cash flow planning and management is critical if you are growing your business very quickly. We'll also look at the financial effect of a common type of business transaction called prepayments. Our hypothetical business has been growing very rapidly and profitably so far. One of the assumptions to date is that taxes are payable at the end of each calendar quarter. So month seven is tax payment time. We haven't had to pay any of these taxes yet. So we've had the benefit of using tax money to help fund our working capital to date. In month seven, we are also going to accelerate sales growth and add in another common type of business transaction called prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses or prepayments are expenses where you pay in advance for goods or services which you will receive in the future. Insurance is a common example. You pay the premium in one lump sum at the start of the insured period so that you are covered for the next 12 months. Let's say in month seven, you decide to take out insurance for the business. The annual premium is $240. Let's ignore any goods and services tax or value added tax on this. What's the effect on your financials? With prepayments, the cash goes out in the first month. But in the profit and loss, this cost is spread over 12 months because the insurance cover is for 12 months. So only one twelfth or $20 of the cost is expensed each month. Let's have a look at how this shows up in your financials. But before we do that, let's go through some of the other assumptions for month seven. First, let's do a quick recap about taxes, which we covered earlier in this series. Tax rules will depend on where you are located. This video uses assumptions that are made up purely to illustrate the principles of how taxes affect your finances. With goods and services tax or value added tax, your business has actually collected the taxes on sales and paid taxes on your purchases over the three months from April to June. You know or should know exactly how much you have to pay to the tax authorities or how much refund you are entitled to. Withholding tax is also a known amount. You've been withholding that amount out of the pay packet of your employees every month and you now have to hand it over to the tax office. Income tax is finalized at the end of each financial year. In Australia, the tax office will also make an assessment of how much income tax you are likely to pay the following year, and businesses have to remit this assessed amount in quarterly installments to the tax office. It's called the pay-as-you-go or pay-ayg system. Your country may have a similar system. Ask your accountant. That assessed quarterly payment isn't going to be identical to the current year's provision for tax. The tax office isn't in the business of predicting your future income. But to keep things simple, I'm going to assume that these amounts are exactly equal. Other assumptions. Let's assume that the business continues to grow very rapidly. Sales are $18,000 in month seven. That's a 50% sales increase from month six. We'll keep the same mix of 80% credit sales and 20% cash sales. Let's also say that inventory holdings are increased to $2,000 to make sure that we don't run out of stock with this strong sales growth momentum. To keep things a little bit more realistic, let's add in overhead expenses of $1,000 a month for things like phone bills, electricity, internet charges, couriers, postage, and so on. And I'm not going to include any goods and services tax or VAT to these costs, although in the real world, these items would also include these taxes if your country has GST or VAT as part of the taxation regime. We'll keep wages at $400 a month at this stage, and our supplier is still giving us 30-day credit terms, and we pay on time. Now let's look at what month seven financials show us about the business. First, the profit and loss. You paid $240 for a 12-month insurance policy this month. So each month, $20 is charged as an expense to the profit and loss. The balance of $220 this month shows up under prepayments in the balance sheet under current assets. It's an asset because the insurance company owes your business the service of insurance cover for the next 12 months. If you cancel the policy before the 12 months is up, you can get a refund of the unused portion of the premium. Despite sales of $18,000 and net profit of $5,306, your cash balances actually decreased this month. Where did that money go? That's where the cash flow statement comes in. But first, let's look at the liquidity position of your balance sheet. Both the current and the asset test ratios at the end of July are higher than the ratios at the 30th of June. 
That suggests that the business has stronger liquidity at the end of July than at the end of June. But is that really the case? Note that prepayments are included as a liquid asset in the calculation of both ratios. Is prepaid insurance really a liquid asset? I mean, if you needed to realize cash very quickly, would you actually cancel an insurance policy? That would make no business sense at all. The improvement in these ratios is because current assets increased more than current liabilities in percentage terms. Current liabilities didn't increase as fast as current assets because you owe less in taxes. But the increase in current assets is largely due to an increase in trade debtors. Cash actually went down. I'm drawing your attention to this to reinforce the point I made in previous training videos about the limitations of assessing the liquidity of a business using only balance sheet ratios. Never take these ratios at face value. Now let's get back to the cash flow statement to see why cash decreased even though your business had healthy sales and profits. Look at the contrast between June and July cash flow numbers. Your business activities in July actually chewed up $872 of your cash, even though you had higher net profit this month. That's because working capital in July tied up $6,178 in cash. See that cash generated used for working capital line? With business growth, you are carrying more debtors and more inventory. Just the increase in debtors alone has tied up cash flow of $7,370. The payment for the insurance, that's the line increase in prepayments, shows cash outflow of $220. But you paid $240 in cash for the insurance premium. Where's the other $20? The cash flow effect of that $20 expense in July is already picked up in the calculation of net profit. At this point in the business cycle, you also have to make tax payments. I've relabeled the provisions line as tax liabilities for purposes of clarity. Look at the difference in tax liabilities line in June versus July. In June, taxes were a source of working capital funding to the tune of $2,292. But this month, you have had to pay out the tax monies you have been collecting and using for the last three months. You can see it's quite a hit to the cash flow. Let's take a closer look at these tax payments. Here's an extract of the current liabilities section of the balance sheet. And here's an extract of the cash flow statement where I've expanded out the individual items that make up the total increase or decrease in tax liabilities. Let's start with income tax. As I said earlier in this video, income tax rules vary from country to country. The way I'm setting it out here may not apply to your situation and you should always get professional advice about your tax obligations. To keep it simple, I've just assumed that the quarterly income tax installments are exactly equal to the amounts that have been provided against current year's earnings in your accounts. This example is just to illustrate the effect of tax cycles on cash flow and it's certainly not tax advice. This means that you have a quarterly installment of $3,750 that you have to pay to the tax office in July. That amount is real cash going out, so you need to be sure you have the money to pay it. From the overall business perspective, the net cash flow impact of income tax in July is only negative $1,476. This is because your net profit figure is after deducting income tax, but you haven't paid July's income tax yet, so that money is still in your business. Now let's move on to withholding tax for salaries and wages. Up to the end of June, you've held back $24 from your employees' pay packets. In July, you've got to hand this cash over to the tax office. That $24 is real cash going out, but you've held back $12 from the July pay packet, so that money is still in your bank account, even though you've deducted it as part of your wages expense for July. The net cash flow impact of withholding tax on your working capital is therefore only negative $12. Now let's look at the goods and services tax, which is similar to value added tax. At the end of June, we had accumulated three months of net GST liabilities, totaling $1,300. That's GST we've charged on all the sales we've made for the three months to the 30th of June, net of the GST we've paid on stock purchases for the same period. In July, we have to pay this $1,300 to the tax authorities in cash. That $1,300 comes straight out of your bank account. So why does the cash flow statement show only negative $500 cash flow impact for net GST payable? 
because during the month of July, we have collected or invoiced $1,800 of GST on July's sales of $18,000. And we were in turn invoiced by our supplier for $1,000 of GST on the stock purchases of $10,000 that month. So net GST liability for July's trading was $800. But these amounts are not necessarily cash. Whether or not you got the cash benefit of the net $800 GST liability from July's trading depends on whether you actually collected the GST on July sales and you have actually paid the $1,000 GST on purchases. Our credit cash sales split is 80-20. So 80% or $1,440 of the July GST on sales is actually tied up as part of debtors. Only $360 of GST on sales is cash. As we haven't paid our supplier on the July purchases, that $1,000 GST on purchases hasn't gone out in cash yet. It's part of our creditors. But in terms of cash payment to the tax authorities, that $1,300 goes out of your bank account in July. The net cash flow from operations line is the overall net cash flow outcome of trading for the month. Every line in the working capital change section is the net change in the balance of each working capital item over the month. For example, the increase in debtors of $7,370 is the amount of new credit sales of $15,840 less debtor collections of $8,470. The $8,470 is the part that is cash coming in. With the tax liabilities, you have cash going out of $5,074. It's not the $1,988 in the line increase or decrease in tax liabilities in the cash flow statement. Timing is everything with cash flow and one month can be a long time in cash flow terms. Let's say that these month seven figures are forecast figures instead of historical numbers. Everything looks fine, doesn't it? With a healthy bank balance at the start of the month, a $872 decrease in cash doesn't sound like a big deal. But look at what happens during the month. In this calendar, I've set out all the cash receipts and payments that happen during the month. Assume cash sales usually take place on Wednesday of each week. So I've spread the cash sales over five weeks as there happen to be five Wednesdays in this month. Insurance is paid on the first day of the month. Tax payments totaling $5,074 are due at the end of the first week. Your supplier has to be paid on the 8th and your expenses, including wages, are paid in the middle of the month on the 17th. You expect debtor collections to come in on the 15th of the month. Look at what happens to the bank balances. The opening bank balance for each day is shown next to the date. The opening bank balance for the next day is equal to the closing bank balance for the previous day. Note how low the bank balance drops in the second week. It's only after the debtor collections come in that it gets restored to a healthy level. If there are no cash sales on the first Wednesday, you could be in trouble. What if we only had $5,000 in the bank at the start of the month? In theory, the $5,000 bank balance could easily cover $872 net ca cash outflow for the month. But timing of cash flow means that the business will have barely enough to pay its taxes and will not have enough cash to pay its supplier on time. By doing forecasts and identifying where potential cash shortages are likely to happen, you could arrange for an extension of the payment date with your supplier or ask debtors to pay earlier or arrange short-term financing with your bank. But you won't be able to figure out how much cash you need and when you need it by unless you are managing your business finances with rolling weekly cash flow forecasts in addition to monthly three-way forecasts. That's forecast profit and loss, balance sheet and cash flow statement. Let's do a quick recap of the key points that we've covered in this training video. A fast growth business, even if it's profitable, can have negative cash flow from its operating activities because of working capital demands. Liquidity ratios are not sufficient to assess the solvency of a business. Timing is everything with cash flow. With prepaid expenses like insurance, the profit and loss impact is very different from the cash flow impact. Whilst it's classified as a current asset, it cannot in practical terms really be considered a liquid asset, something you can convert to cash. Tax monies cannot be treated as a core source of working capital funding. You have to know your tax obligations and ensure you can comply with them or the tax authorities can and will take action against your business and possibly against you personally as director of the business. 
Plan and manage your cash flows with monthly three-way forecasts. That's profit and loss, balance sheet and cash flow statement, as well as rolling weekly cash flow forecasts. Both are essential. I would really appreciate your feedback on this training. Please put any questions or comments below and I will respond. I also have free training for business owners on how to successfully get the right financing for your business. Click the link that's on the screen and it will take you to cashflowkungfu.com where you can sign up to access the free financing success blueprint training. Master your cash flow, know your finances so that you can drive strong, sustainable business growth and thrive. Thank you for watching. If this has been useful, please like and subscribe to my channel.